Hi, I'm Scott Allen Miller and this is Sam IT here on YouTube. Today, we're gonna answer the question, does VOIP or voice over IP require VLANs, uh, virtual LANs, the security mechanism uh, for your switches? The simple answer is no. In no way does VOIP require VLANs. That's the easy answer. You can do VOIP without VLANs, people do it every day. In fact, there's entire categories of VOIP that people do without VLANs and no one even thinks about it. Things like Skype or Google Hangouts or just any random voice over IP technology that isn't going eventually to the phone system, people never think about implementing VLANs for these at all and they work just fine. So fine that no one ever talks about VLANs for them because they're not needed. This proves that you don't need VLANs for VOIP, but it doesn't answer the question that people are really asking, which is why does everyone tell them that they need VLANs for VOIP? Now this gets a little bit more complex. So first of all, what are VLANs? VLANs are a virtualization technology at the switch level and on your routers uh, that allows you to basically create uh, theoretical LANs, uh, networks that are completely segregated from other networks and don't crosstalk. The idea is one of security and management at scale. It's not designed for performance. If you wanted performance, you would use other technologies, sub such as physically separated LANs, which is a separate switch for each LAN, where the switches don't share uh, bandwidth, then you would actually gain more bandwidth or eliminate crosstalk at the performance level. Uh, this is generally not the issue that we're trying to deal with, though. The other is QoS, or quality of service. QoS and VLANs often get associated simply because they're technologies that are learned at the same time. And in some cases, you can use QoS at a VLAN level this gets a little bit confusing for people who are trying to make their phones better. So let's step back. When people are talking about VOIP and VLANs, they're typically talking about, and by typically I mean always, talking about their traditional phone VOIP that's going to connect to the PSTN, the Public Switch Telephone Network, the network that uses phone numbers, right? So you can call outside to someone's cell phone, to their landline, to another company, whatever. That's what people are actually talking about. Now, there are potentially performance problems with VOIP that we need to address. This is true, but there's a couple problems. One is that these problems rarely exist on the LAN. They can, and it's worth addressing those, but it's bad to assume that that will be the case because almost no company has that problem. Your LAN is really, really fast. Your WAN is really, really slow in comparison. Because of this, people often get confused and think because they have something that they need to do on their WAN, they might need to do it on their LAN, or simply not be able to identify where the bottleneck is, or they're told a lot of people have performance problems, and so they try to address them without seeing if they have them themselves, and then address it in the wrong spot, and since they didn't have a problem, it works, and then they repeat that it works, and uh, that doesn't uh, really help. So it, it's very misleading. So. Uh, that can be a problem with, with VLANs, uh, because VLANs do this. What people like to do, what people need to do on their LAN to improve telephone performance is quality of service. Now, you need to do that to your voice traffic, not just random traffic. The problem with putting QoS and tying it to your VLAN and prioritizing a VLAN instead of voice traffic is that there's other traffic on that VLAN. Traffic like web interfaces, TFTP, SIP, because SIP doesn't carry voice, and things like that. Those get prioritized along with your audio, and that doesn't do the best job. And when your VLAN ends, which it always does, that quality of service is gone, and it doesn't get carried on to where you actually need it. So it's essentially completely wasted, and in some cases, actually counterintuitive or counterproductive. What you need to do is actually prioritize the audio traffic, and if possible, end-to-end -end without leaving it on its own where there's actually bottlenecks. Now remember, 95 to 99% of companies will never experience issues on their LAN. All this work to prioritize on your LAN is kind of to just protect against the really rare circumstances that something might happen. If you don't have gear or the time to implement QoS on your network, it probably doesn't matter. Now where it does matter is where you have a bottleneck going from your LAN onto the WAN. This is your network, your internet connection. Here, you are very likely to experience problems where quality of service could be helpful, but VLANs don't extend there. So in this discussion of whether we need VLANs or not, VLANs are useless there. So VLANs have nothing 
really to offer the voice space. They're just extra overhead to manage, extra things to go wrong, extra things to think about and troubleshoot. Now, that doesn't answer why everyone tells you, other than the bit of confusion, which is a major reason. But why does everyone tell you you need VLANs with voice? Well, this goes back to a number of things, and they kind of come together to create a market force. One of the big ones is that VOIP was initially primarily implemented in the enterprise, and enterprises have VLANs for other reasons. They have them for management, they have them for security, they have them for segregating who's working on what, so separation of duty, uh, things like that. Enterprises always have VLANs. They just do. It's just the nature of the beast. Because of this, voice is often put onto its own VLAN or VLANs. So they associate the two simply because that's the way that they work. It's that simple. And when we get to smaller uh, businesses, they tend to get VLANs either because they're copying the enterprise. VOIP, for some reason, is considered a dark art and is very confusing, even though it shouldn't be. And so smaller companies have a tendency to panic when they see VOIP and blindly copy what larger companies do without looking to see if the things that they're copying make any sense for their environment. So VLANs get carried along for the ride as people don't realize that they weren't quality of service. Service, they're just confused. Remember, in the SMB, we almost never have network engineers at any level, not temporary, not full-time. So it's very easy for people to not realize how QoS works, how VLANs work, or what any of these terms even mean, and implement them blindly. Now, we also have the problem that a lot of people, for the same reason, they go to vendors to get their VOIP. When they do this, they are setting themselves up for the vendor to take advantage of them, and vendors are very willing to do this the majority of the time. With VOIP, one of the big ways to make money is to make people doubt their networks. This allows vendors to then sell networking gear and networking support services, which are very expensive in most cases. A lot of small companies won't have a VLAN capability on their switches, so this may rack up a multi-thousand or multi-tens of thousands of dollars of profit for a vendor who's now selling switches that you never needed. And of course, they're switches that are more complicated, so since you didn't work with them in the past, you'll need them to support them and so forth. This just keeps upping the ante on why they want to tell you that you need a VLAN. So everyone has kind of an incentive to push a VLAN on you, even if it doesn't make sense. Now, what's important here is that VLANs do not support VOIP. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't have VLANs. The discussion around whether you should have a VLAN in your environment is unrelated to VOIP or quality of service. It's about management and security. So there's plenty of cases where at any size, SMB or enterprise, you may have a good reason to have VLANs. A really popular place, of course, is to segregate out guest traffic uh, that's coming in over Wi-Fi or something like that. If you have lots of VLANs for other purposes, having one for your voice might very well make sense. But be aware that it may very well get in the way and be a problem. The VLAN itself does not benefit VOIP, but VOIP will work with VLANs just fine the same as anything else. So the discussion or the decision around whether or not you should have VLANs in your environment is one that's independent of your VOIP decisions. That's what's important here. So does VOIP need a VLAN? Absolutely not. Does a VLAN play a role in VOIP implementations? It depends. Only if your environment would have VLANs otherwise. All right, thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe, ask questions below, get involved in the discussion, and if you want to support us here at Sam IT, you can uh, hop over to uh, Patreon. We're going to have a link below, uh, and that's a wonderful way to support us directly. Thank you very much.